Hey everybody and welcome to Crazy Culinary Co Questions with uh, Patrick Evans Hilton and we are having Cinco de Mayo cocktails tonight while we're talking. We don't have to talk Cinco de Mayo, we don't have to talk Mexican food, we can talk anything that you want to talk about. It's all up to you, but I am enjoying a delicious margarita. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. That is classic. I just picked this up not too long ago at Cowboy Neal's Cantina. If you haven't been there, they're in the former Stoley's, which is at the intersection of Mill Dam and uh, North Great Neck Road in Virginia Beach. I also picked up some really great food while I was there, too. So Douglas and I just finished having dinner not too long ago. I'm going to be posting, if you follow me in... Um, if you follow me in uh, my Facebook group, uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Virginia Eats and Drinks, you know that we um, always post the dinner post, so I'll be posting some great photos of that. But we have some beans and rice. We also have some chicken quesadillas, and Douglas has some Bam Bam chicken uh, wrapped up in some burritos. So those were absolutely fabulous. But we brought home these wonderful margaritas, just a classic, classic margarita to enjoy. So cheers to you. Cheers to Tuesday. Cheers to Norfolk Fest events, because this is an, a part of the Norfolk Fest events stay at home series. And so I'm going to pull up some information here because I want to let you know. Let me pull this up here. I want to let you know about this um, series that we're doing. You know, uh, we started this one week ago tonight uh, here with the crazy culinary questions with cocktails. Then we had it last Saturday night. We'll be doing this again next Saturday. Let me pull up here for you and give you the information that you will need. Uh, let's see here. So how's everybody been doing so far this week? It's uh, already Tuesday. Gosh, it's already May the 5th. Cinco de Mayo, can you believe it? What are y'all doing? I see everybody is coming. Oh, so, so Becky Ferguson, uh, you say, oh, I love that place. I know, isn't it great? It's one of my favorite places too. I love it. There really is a Cowboy Neil. He's a hoot. Um, Maggie was the barkeep tonight. I uh, met the chef tonight. His name escapes me. I'm so sorry. It's like uh, he just came out very briefly because they were slammed, as you can imagine. Um, but it is an absolutely great, great place. So I want to read this information to you about what we're doing tonight. Then we'll get to asking uh, and answering some questions. Uh, so be thinking about those. Um, the crazy culinary questions. Uh, with cocktails is part of Norfolk Fest events stay at home event series. Uh, it, the series is designed to bring you a wide variety of family friendly entertainment to the comfort of your own home. If you're enjoying this series and are in a position to help, most people don't realize Norfolk Fest events is actually a nonprofit organization. So as you can imagine, just like so many people right now, things are really being affected. I mean, look at all the events that have not been able to take place uh, so far. You know, Harbor Fest, the Bayou Boogaloo. Uh, so if you're in a position to help financially, please head to the link in the description. Uh, and we're going to be posting that uh, also uh, along with uh, what you're seeing scrolling down at the end of uh, our live broadcast here uh, for the PayPal fundraising campaign. Every little bit counts, a quarter, a dollar, ten dollars, whatever you can do, every little bit counts, and they are tremendously grateful for any contributions. You can go over to festevents.org, that's festevents.org. You can also go to their Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash Nauvick Fest Events. So, what are, what's everybody been doing so far for Cinco de Mayo? Let me know. Have you cooked out? Have you cooked anything Mexican? Or are you just kind of letting it chill a little bit, not really worrying about uh, Cinco de Mayo? Um, have you cooked? Have you uh, supported local restaurants? Have you gone out and picked up some Mexican food? Have you made your own margaritas? You know, if you catch me um, when I'm on Coast Live, uh, that's here in uh, Coastal Virginia on uh, WTKR News Channel 3. Uh, I'm on News Channel 3 uh, about every other Monday. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually made some margaritas using uh, Blue Bee Cider from Richmond. It's a hard cider. I mean, I kind of hate saying hard cider because it kind of makes you think of those really nasty kind of things that come in a can. This is really nice and really refined. So it's a Virginia cider. You can make a really good margarita. So I'm going to be posting that tomorrow. I know it's a little after they ball, but by the time we get off the uh, Facebook Live here, Eh, you know, but you can still make it any time because it's springtime and you can always enjoy a margarita, right? So I'll be posting that information too. So be sure 
to uh, to tune into that too. But oh my goodness, the meal from um, from Cowboy Meals tonight was so amazing, and I'm going to be posting that. So when you get on later, be sure to look and see what I had at Cowboy Meals, and be sure to post what you had as well. And then also, so what's what's everybody? Oh, hey, Scott, Scott Sampson. Hey, how's it going? Cheers. So let me know what are y'all drinking? What are you enjoying tonight? Doesn't have to be anything uh, for Cinco de Mayo. Doesn't have to be a margarita. But um, boy, it sure doesn't hurt to have one, does it? Mm hmm. Wow. All right. So, ask some questions. If y'all the first time that y'all tuned into this. You may know this is, um, I don't want to say like drunk history because I'm not, not drunk and I'm not getting drunk. I'm just enjoying a cocktail. But, um, but this is kind of a chance to chill and relax a little bit and ask some questions. Um, it doesn't have to be cooking related. You can ask me any questions that you want to, maybe about um, dining out. Or you can certainly ask about if you got some leftovers, if you... Um, you know, uh, any cooking questions that you have, wine questions, um, you know, questions about, um, uh, yeah, any, anything that you, that you want to ask. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, I've dined out quite a bit. Uh, of course, now the dining out is meaning to go and pick something up and return home or to use um, a delivery service or something, but I'm still supporting local restaurants. You won't catch me supporting uh, are you know using uh, chain restaurants at all so I'm supporting local and I hope that you do too because now more than ever all of our local restaurants really really need uh, our help and our support the big chains they're gonna be just fine they're they're gonna be just fine and if they're not I mean they're a big chain our local restaurants and our not only our local restaurants our local breweries our local distilleries our local wineries our local specialty food producers they they all need our support just like our local events just like fest events they all everybody local needs our support we're all in this together and so who somebody said something back here somebody mentioned something about a margarita uh sharon english yes yes uh, you're craving a margarita honey i was earlier too and that's why i went to cowboy meals because they have a great lineup of margaritas and all too scott samson you're enjoying what a Woodford Reserve on the rocks. Well, you sure can't go wrong there, can you? Absolutely not. Now, let's see, uh, Elizabeth. So I picked up a orange margarita from Bay Local. Well, you can't go wrong there either. I love me some Bay Local too, that's for sure. I don't think I've ever had their orange margarita, but I certainly have had some really great cocktails from there and all as well. Love their Bloody Marys, especially that one where they put the soft shell crab on top and they put those two little uh, things up on top that look like the eyes with the olives and everything. That's a lot of fun. Um, so Scott Stenson, what is your favorite winery in Virginia? Well, boy, isn't that a loaded question, huh? Get, trying to catch me here live on a, and to, to answer a question like that. Well, I can tell you that we have a lot of tremendous wineries. When I first moved to Virginia 30-something uh, years ago, I think that there were 12 wineries in the state. I think there's more than 300 now or close to 300 or something. And so, you know, there's the wineries have a wide uh, range of um, uh, of of offerings, don't they? Uh, there's a lot of wineries that are more uh, small operations. Uh, some of them maybe kind of doing it a little uh, a little hobbyish. Some of them are much larger operations. Some of them uh, kind of uh, do winery do wines that are uh, South African style, uh, Italian style, French style. Uh, some of them lean toward the fruit wine. So, you know, um, if I was going to open up a bottle of wine, how about if we say this, if I was going to open up a bottle of wine right now, hmm, I'm pretty full from dinner, but you can always eat oysters. Good God, can't you always eat oysters? So I would probably have a nice half dozen, well, let's just say a whole dozen, of really good Eastern Shore oysters. And I would probably have a Chatham Vineyard, a uh, really nice chilled stainless steel Chardonnay from uh, from Chatham. But boy, you know, I do love um, the T. Bell Janison sparkling, and I can always, always go for some sparkling wine. But that Octagon that Barbersville makes, I could just put a nipple on that bottle, and I could just kick back and, 
and I could just go to La La Land with that. But there's so many. I mean, why limit yourself to one? It's like so many restaurants. You should just really go with the flow and go with what you like and go with the mood. You know, food and wine, it's all about mood, isn't it? It's really all about what you're in the mood for. It's all about the situation, who you're with. You know, it's just about so many different things. And so... Um, I don't like to limit myself to one thing, you know. Now, there are some things that maybe I don't necessarily care for, but I'm certainly also very willing to uh, open up the possibility of trying something again. You know, um, we just we just have such a wonderful, wonderful commonwealth, you know, so many great people that are cooking food and producing food and so much, uh, so much uh, great drink to have and all too. And I'm chatting, 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 and I know I saw a question back here. I'm gonna scroll back through. I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you. So Karen Scherberger, if, if up to you, what type of restaurant are we missing in Hampton Rose that you'd like to see added to the food scene? Well, you know, I'd like to see a couple more ethnic restaurants. I'd love to see, there is a great uh, Ethiopian restaurant, but I'd like to see some more Ethiopian food. Uh, you know, Omar is a great person, uh, Omar's Carriage House, but I think he only does uh, Moroccan, you know, one night. I'd like to see more Moroccan food. I'd love to see more Asian cuisine, but some more unique Asian cuisines. You know, there's nothing wrong with Thai, there's nothing wrong with Vietnam, there's nothing wrong with, um, nothing wrong with, um, Korean, but I'd like to see some more unique, maybe some Cambodian, uh, maybe some Laotian. And I know there's a few of those places, and I know they're popping up, but I'd like to see more of those. I'd also like to see, you know, maybe some more niche, so maybe not necessarily French. I love some Layaka, but I'd like to see maybe some French pro uh, Provençal, maybe some French countryside, uh, some peasant food, you know, something that's really very interesting. Um, you know, maybe some, maybe some Eastern Bloc countries, um, you know, maybe some real Spanish food, uh, open up some of the different countries in South America and Central America. I'd like to see, you know, us explore different types of plant-based foods too. Um, you know, I believe any food is good food as long as you enjoy it. I don't really call myself a vegan or an omnivore or anything like that. I just say that as long as it's something that's good, prepared well and ethical that you should enjoy it. I think that, um, you know, we're, we're all, um, you know, out there for, to, to enjoy something. I do enjoy eating vegan as much as I can, but I do also enjoy eating, um, you know, eating meat and all too. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see smaller restaurants too, you know, and we're probably going to see some of that too, right? We're, we're going to see a lot of social distancing within restaurants, but some of those really small intimate restaurants too. So let's see, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing any questions as I kind of ramble on and on and on and on and on. And Scott, I know, not trying to limit, I love several waters in Virginia. I know you're not. I know you're not. I just kind of went off there uh, a little bit, but yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Elizabeth, are there any ethnic bakeries in Tidewater? Well, there are There are several really good Filipino rest, uh, bakeries that I know of. Um, you know, you can kind of Google some of those around. Glory Bakery is one uh, in particular. So um, there are several really good um, uh, Filipino in particular. Um, there are some that kind of specialize in French, but I'm not sure that they're necessarily French itself. Um, you know, um, you know, the, I don't think that there's any German anymore, uh, German specific, and I'm trying to think anything else. Um, so, you know, I would like to see more bakeries, you know, and just in some really good mom and pop kind of bakeries and all too. So, um, I think that, you know, uh, maybe that's that maybe that's an avenue to explore because I really would love to see some good ethnic bakeries. I'd love to see, you know, like um, you know, some some bakeries, you know, that uh, have some really good Eastern European. Um, I know that Cafe Stella does a great great job. Uh, a lot of times of offering a lot of Eastern European as a nod to her husband Mariusz, who's from Poland. And of course, she does some marvelous things that are French inspired and all too. But to answer your question, there are there are several really good Filipino bakeries and all around as well. So y'all tell me now. You got to tell me. I've, I've only heard a few people that are drinking, um, 
you know, some Woodford and a few things like that. What else are y'all enjoying on this evening? Because it's it's 7.15. It's beyond the traditional start of cocktail hour. Of course, these days, cocktail hour starts at what? 9 a.m.? Did I say that out loud? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, again, thank you so much for preparing this beautiful margarita at the uh, Cowboy Mills Cantina uh, off of Great Neck and Mills Dam in Virginia Beach. This is so beautiful. Maggie prepared this. It is so wonderful. What did, what did y'all do? Tell me what y'all did for Cinco de Mayo. Um, I know it sounds terribly stereotypical, but doesn't Mexican food seem to just taste better on Cinco de Mayo? And I think that, you know, from I've never really sat down and asked anybody from Mexico what they think about Americans celebrating Cinco de Mayo, but from what I've read, they kind of think that we're silly for doing it. But, you know, it's kind of fun to do it too, isn't it? I mean, it's silly. I mean, but, meh, here we go. Cheers. So while everybody's a little typing shy there, and I don't know why y'all are so shy the other night, Y'all are just typing so much you could hardly keep up with your questions. But I want to let y'all remember now, we're going to be back on Saturday, but this is part of Norfolk Fest Events Stay at Home event series. Uh, the series is designed to bring you a wide variety of family-friendly entertainment to the comfort of your own home. If you're enjoying the series and are in a position to help the cause financially, please head to the link in the description. We're going to be putting more down below in the description. Uh, for a PayPal funding campaign, because Festivus is actually a nonprofit organization. Uh, every little bit counts, and they're tremendously grateful for any contributions. You can also uh, go to festevents.org, uh, festevents.org, or you can head over to their Facebook uh, page, and that's uh, uh, facebook.com slash Festivents. So what other questions do y'all have? Do you have any questions about... Um, uh, any Mexican food or um, do you have any questions about um, maybe tequila? Um, not that I know a lot about tequila, but I know that I like tequila. Um, what other questions do you have? I see a lot of people are watching, which is awesome, but you need to ask me some questions. This isn't a one-way street here, although I can talk. That's, that's pretty obvious and all, too. Um, what's, let me ask you all a question. What is... Your favorite Mexican dish? Do you like tacos? Is it hard shell tacos, soft shell tacos? Do you like ground beef? Do you like chicken? Do you like burritos? Um, do you like refried beans? Do you like black beans? What do you like? Do you like sangria? Do you like um, Eileen Peskov? I see you. You just snuck in the room. Tell me what you like. Tell me what kind of Mexican food you like. All right. And so also, if you were on my uh, Virginia Eats and Drinks page earlier. Who saw my post about El Toro? Who remembers El Toro uh, over off of Northampton and um, Diamond Springs Road? That was one of the first Mexican restaurants I remember eating at here in, in coastal Virginia. They were, gosh, I think started like, what, about 50 years ago? Uh, and, oh, I mean, so old school uh, and so absolutely fabulous. Those ground beef tacos, um, and I remember the chili rellenos. I love chili rellenos. And um, who, let me ask y'all this too. Who knows what type of pepper is used in chili rellenos? Hmm? All right, Alvin. Alvin, hello, Alvin. Alvin's one of my favorite people, one of my favorite chefs. He's the chef owner of Cobalt Grill. And Alvin says, is salt or sugar traditional on margaritas? Well, Alvin, I personally think salt is, and I prefer salt on it because I kind of like that um, little bit of cutting of the sourness that's on there. Although some people uh, do like sugar on there, and I guess especially if they're doing one of those margaritas, which I think is an absolute bastardization of the thing, but if you're doing one of those strawberry or mangoes, and I probably shouldn't say that because I really do think that you ought to eat and drink what you really enjoy, but then I think that probably sugar is acceptable, but I personally like salt on there, and I like a really good coarse salt that has a good crunch and all to it. What do you like on yours, Alvin? Let me know. So Karen, give us a good sangria recipe. Well, I would start with a really nice uh, lighter red wine. So 
you know, maybe a light-bodied Merlot or a Chianti, a Sangiovese. You know, Barbersville makes a really good Sangiovese. So maybe a Sangiovese, and then I'd pour in some orange liqueur. Uh, so maybe like a Grand Marnet or, um, you know, a, um, a triple sec or something like that. And I would cut up some fruit. It wouldn't matter what kind of fruit, but some citrus. So oranges and lemons and limes. And then I squeeze them a little bit and put those in. You could also put in, you know, maybe some grapes if you wanted to or some cherries. It's all up to you if you had some strawberries, anything that you want to put in there and all is fine as well. And then um, I would put in a little bit of seltzer water or you could also put in a little bit of just a splash of champagne to give it a little bit of bubbles too. And then I'd stir that bad boy up. Some people would say that you could put some sugar in there. You could if you wanted to. Um, another drink that I actually like to make too, that's kind of like a sangria, but it's kind of not, and it's called a Zocto, well, it's Spanish, and it starts with an X, Zocal? No, I think that's an antidepressant. Anyway, it's basically one half red wine, and a, kind of a lighter red wine, and one half Coca-Cola, and then I like to throw in some maraschino cherries because I love maraschino cherries. And believe it or not, that's kind of the kissing cousin to a mar to a sangria, and I love those. Mm -hmm. So Jordan Lett, what is your favorite Mexican dish? Overall, you know, I think I'd have to say chili rellenos. I love chili rellenos. I love they're the Anaheim chilies, and they split those open, and they stuff those with um, cheese and then they roll them in flour and they fry them and then they pour that mole sauce on top that beautiful rich thick oh mole sauce it's got the cocoa powder in it it's not sweet at all and it is so absolutely good oh it's delicious and so jordan Lett, what's your favorite local mexican restaurant oh my goodness gracious well, you know, again, I think it all depends on what you're in the mood for. And, you know, there are so many Mexican restaurants that, you know, they're all in our neighborhood and they're good for for being right there around around the block, you know. So uh, close to us is Cowboy Meals, and we love Cowboy Meals where we live. Uh, my partner Doug and I, we live in uh, London Bridge. We really love Las Palmas. Uh, there's a location that is uh, attached to Lynn Haven Mall. We love that. And um, we love uh, Mikasita. And there's a Mikasita that's near Lynn Haven Mall too. Um, and we love those because they're consistent and they're good and they're close. Um, we also, if we're going to drive to a Mexican restaurant, we always, always love Jesse's Taqueria. I love the Jesse's Bistro that's in Kent, but that Jesse's in Ocean View is so freaking authentic and Jorge Romero is such a wonderful man and everything is just so wonderful there a true real great success story um, you know coming to the United States of uh, his father and setting up this wonderful uh, restaurant not only a Mexican restaurant but also just you know this great um, uh, you know cantina next door not cantina um, hacienda grocery store that's it. It's margarita started to talk about. Anyway, love going there. Um, but Jesse's, if I'm going to get in the car and really go someplace, it's going to be Jesse's. Or if I'm over in that way, even if I'm, even if I am full as a tick, I'm going to stop by and eat at Jesse's. I can tell you that much. But in these neck of the woods, um, it's those others. But it's definitely, it's definitely going to probably be Cowboy Meals because. Uh, Neil again uh, is is a good friend of mine, and I I just I love supporting friends and all as well. Um, so let's see here. I'm missing a few. It's got some nice sparkling red moscato. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Karen, so what's the next food theme festival you would like to see in the region? Uh, something to do with seafood. Uh, you know, that's that's what this region is built on. That's what so many people in this area like. I mean, some people don't like seafood. And if they don't, you know, then move to Kansas. Did I say that out loud again? Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, so um, definitely something with seafood. I think, um, you know, and and maybe maybe something just lump it in one category and, and call it the Don't Be Shellfish Festival. 
And so you've got crab and crab cakes and a crab pick and, and oysters and oyster Rockefellers. And maybe, um, you know, they're really, they're starting to harvest some nice shrimp here in the Virginia waters now too. So shrimp and so some great clams, maybe a clam bake, you know. Um, I, I think something like that because that's really, that's our heritage. That's our heritage, plain and simple. Um, that's, that's how we were, you know, that, that's, if you go back and look, that's what um, people well before the English were eating in our area. I mean, other things too, but it's really seafood is where it's at here. So, Ms. Sherberger, I would gladly love to help you work on the Don't Be Shellfish Festival. <laughs> I know another for that one. So what are you drinking, Ms. Sherberger? Are you drinking your, you're drinking your um, um, Grey Goose and, and soda? All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. Bodega, thank you, thank you, Andrew Ellis. I mean, I know that word for goodness sakes, and I just couldn't think of that. Let's see here. So Jordan, favorite type of taco? Hmm. He says al pastor, carne asada. You know, hmm. I go to California a lot, and I really just, I really love the freshness of a good fish taco. Um, it, it's it's lighter, um, and especially when the fish is is very lightly breaded and fried. I mean, very lightly, almost like a tempura, or when the fish is fish is even grilled or something. Um, so, I would say a fish taco actually, um, with really crisp, fresh um, cabbage and some uh, really great crema and some fresh maybe a um, soup, fruit salsa, maybe some mango and some jalapeno. Uh, chopped up in it in a nice soft uh, tortilla that is folded in, maybe a lightly, lightly grilled corn tortilla um, in those small tortillas. Oh, I, that, that's, that's my favorite overall, I have to say. So let's see here. Mr. Sampson, have you ever used poblano peppers for chili rellenos? I use them and think they give a little kick on the heat. Um, I haven't. I mean, that's a great idea. I like that. I've just always used the traditional Anaheim because that's just what um, what I've always just picked up and everything. But that sounds fabulous, and I think that sounds like a plan, Stan. Let's see here. Um, hmm. Elizabeth, we have leftover ground beef from Taco Tuesday ideas. All right, leftover ground beef. So you could use that, and then you could add in a little bit of extra spices, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of crushed red pepper, and then um, open up a can of um, crushed tomatoes, and uh, put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in, and put it in the skillet, and then cook that around a little bit, maybe just a sprinkle, sprinkle, tiny, tiny sprinkle of sugar, and then make some sloppy joes. Maybe put in a squirt of maybe a little bit of yellow mustard or a little bit of ketchup or something like that. Kind of play around and taste a little bit and make some sloppy joes. You could also have some fun, and you could make um, a hamburger or a cheeseburger omelet for breakfast the next day. Just make a really nice, fresh omelet and then sprinkle the ground beef down the center, put some grated cheese, and then a little bit of uh, diced tomato, fold it over, and put a garnish of shredded lettuce on top, and then maybe just a nice squirt of ketchup on top of that. How does that sound? Sound good? Andrew Ellis, any place to get great uh, pozole? Um, I'm sure they have it on the menu at Jesse's. I don't think that I've ever really look per se, but I would look at Jesse's ta uh, Taqueria in Ocean View. I would check that out. So, oh gosh, Karen, you and your wrinkle fruits and vegetables. Girl, we're going to have to have a talk. I'm serious. Karen Sherberger, who asked about wrinkled turnips a few weeks or last week, says, what to do with a wrinkled lime asking for a friend? Well, friends don't let friends have wrinkled limes. I can tell you that. Not as affordable and as cheap as they are. Kind of, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember the last time I've really particularly priced limes. But anyway, you know, I'd roll that bad boy around. I'd break up the, the fruit inside as much as I possibly could. I'd cut it up, and then I would juice it because I wouldn't want that wrinkled old exterior touching a cocktail of mine, for goodness sakes. But you could use the juice inside. And so you might use that juice inside to make yourself a nice margarita. Does that help? 
And really, you need to do something about that crisper in your refrigerator because everything's getting wrinkled. Either that or you need to, maybe you've got a Benjamin Buttons refrigerator. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe all your fruit started out wrinkled and it's actually going back and getting young. Maybe you just need to give it a little bit younger, uh, a little bit longer, and you're going to actually going to have a beautiful fresh lime in another couple of days. Any other questions? Any other questions? What are what's everybody out there having and enjoying as a as a libation? We got just another couple of minutes before we wrap things up here. Remember to go to festevents.org. That's festevents.org. Also, you can go to uh, facebook.com/slash Novik Fest Events. You can find out more about this absolutely wonderful Novik Fest Events Stay at Home Event Series because this isn't the only thing they've got going on. They've got a whole great series of uh, different things they have scheduled up. So you can take um, online yoga classes. You can find out about people's pets. There's um, online scavenger hunts. There's all kinds of really cool things. I'm just so lucky to be part of this uh, coming to you on Tuesdays and Saturday evenings. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I'm really having a, a lot of fun uh, doing all of this as well. So we're going to take one last comment or one last question. So make it a doozy. Make it a doozy. Well, I have another little sip of uh, confidence here. You know, no matter how hard I try, it seems like every set of glasses I buy always has holes in the bottom. Does that happen to you? I hate it when that happens. I mean, I paid a lot of money at Macy's for these things, too. All right, any last questions? Any last comments? Did you have fun tonight? Are you enjoying yourself? Well, <clears throat> goodness gracious, that wasn't very ladylike, was it? All right, one last question here. Who? Oh, here it is. Beth, hey, Patrick, I worked with you years ago when you did an Earth Day cook-up. I remember that. That was at Mount Trashmore, wasn't it? That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I had a, that was a windy day, as I remember, though, too. I remember stuff getting blown all over the place, but that was a lot of fun. I'm trying to remember. I know Kevin from Zushi. I remember him being one of the chefs. And I'm trying to remember who else was all a participant because that has been quite some time, in fact. You've got a good memory. That was fun. Well, folks, I love you all to pieces. And uh, this was a lot of fun. Again, remember, this is part of the Novik Fest Event Stay at Home event series. Get on festevents.org uh, to find out more about the series, the other things that are happening as part of the series, the yoga classes, the scavenger hunts, everything offered to you free. And uh, also, if you're able to uh, to help a little bit financially, there's uh, some information there for the, the PayPal uh, fundraising. And then I'm going to be back here, uh, Facebook Live, on Saturday for more crazy culinary questions with cocktails. You can always reach out to me on the Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Virginia Eats and Drinks. And um, we're all in this together. Love y'all all. Uh, all very very much you know we're all here uh, just trying to figure it all out so let's all be kind to each other let's all support local let's all support each other and um, let's all be responsible with these but for goodness sakes just enjoy life so I bid y'all good night and happy Cinco de Mayo